Okay, in this question, what we've done is solve this. I've solved it two different ways. Let's investigate the first way where I don't do a substitution. What I do here is have the x squared plus 4 on x squared. Now, the way to do this is to make sure we multiply through by x squared. To, again, get rid of that fraction. We don't like it. That gives us an x to the power of 4 plus 4 is equal to 5x squared. Now, when I collect all the terms on one side to make it equal to 0, we get x to the power of 4 minus 5x squared plus 4 is equal to 0. Now, I can either go and do this by substitution at this point, or I can look at that and go, well, I know it's going to be x squared and x squared there, and solve it a bit like a, quad a quadratic function as such, except that it's a quartic function, but I'm solving it the same way. I do my cross method, and I see that my brackets would come out as x squared minus 1, x squared minus 4. If you're not sure about that, expand it out and you'll get you'll see that it comes out to be that equation. Then what I'm going to do is solve each of those brackets because multiplying the two brackets, it's equaling the 0. So either 1 or both got to be equal to 0. x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So x squared is equal to 1. So x then could be equal to plus or minus 1 when I take this positive or negative square root. The x squared minus 4 will come down and set that equal to 0 as well. Leaves us with x squared having to be equal to 4 to make that equal to 0, and x being equal to either equal to positive or negative 2. If I do it by substitution, at this point, I would let u be equal to x squared, which gives me a nice quadratic. If that, is help, if that helps you, do it that way, and that's not a problem. Either way is fine. It will get the same answers. So you get the u minus 1, u minus 4, instead of just the x squared. There. Now u minus 1 comes down to be equal to 0, there's the u equal to 1, or the x squared equal to 1, which gives us the x equal to plus or minus 1. I'll say u minus 4 is equal to 0, so u equals 4. x squared would equal 4, and that's going to leave us with the x being equal to plus or minus 2, as we had in the previous part there. So, same answers, done different ways. One's just using a substitution that makes it look a little bit nicer. But really, we're doing the same process. And that's all the substitution is. It's just making the, the look a little bit nicer. What looks like a, what is a quartic comes, we can make it look like a quadratic and solve that. This question, though, this time, a little bit different. If we have a look, it requires us to play around and understand our indice laws. Now, if we're not sure of indice laws, we're going to have trouble here. To the power of 2x, if I write that as to the power of x, all squared. Now, remember, if we multiply, we have a bracket like that, we'd multiply the brackets, which gives us to the power of x times 2. Now, if, I ha if I've got that, that, if I let u be equal to 2 to the power of x, that would be u squared. And that's where the u squared comes from there, because 2 to the power of x, all squared, is 2 to the power of 2x. So now, if I look at this nice quadratic equation, Factorise to give me u minus 8, u minus 1. So again, I've just used the cross method there. u minus 8 would equal 0. u is equal to 8. 2 to the power of x is equal to 8. Now, what I'm going to do is play around with my powers here. I know 2 to the power of x, and I look, it's got to be equal to something equal to 2 to the power of a number to work out nicely. And these ones usually generally work out nicely. 2 to the power of x then would be equal to the power of 3, which leaves me with x is equal to 3. Also, u minus 1 is equal to 0, so we're going to solve that one here. u is equal to 1, again 2 to the power of x is equal to 1, and 1 is 2 to the power of 0, which means if the bases are the same, the powers must be the same, because they're equal, so x is equal to 0. Remember, before you go on, make sure you understand this indice law. Because this is the key. This is where most people go wrong in these questions. If they don't understand the indice law, they can't get started to get a nice substitution to get that factorization happening. And then, obviously, to bring it back, if you can't get started here, there's nothing, no work going to go, be able to go on here. So, again, this, we've got a question like this. Here's our indice laws. 3 to the power of 2p can be written as 3 to the power of p all squared, because these two just multiply to give us 3 to the power of 2p. Got to remember your indice laws. So if u is equal to 3 to the power of p, 3 to the power of 2p is equal to u squared. 3 to the power of p would just be u minus 12. Now we factorize a nice quadratic. We can factorize that. u plus 4, u minus 3. 
Now, if you have a look at this one, this is going to give us an interesting solution. U plus 4 is equal to 0 would mean U is equal to minus 4, which means when we do the substitution back, 3 to the power of P is equal to minus 4. Now, that's a positive number to the power of something. That's never going to give us a negative value. So 3 to the power of some number, there's no number we can find that's going to give us minus 4. So that means this gives us no solutions, and that's okay. Sometimes you might only have one or, one or two or three sometimes four solutions but in this case it's got no solutions you could have no solutions to a quadratic that we've seen before so that's okay don't panic if you get no solutions because that's that could be a, an option u minus 3 would equal 0 from this part so again u would equal 3 p 3 to the power of p is equal to 3 to the power of 1 so p would equal 1 from that so there's our answer. Only P is equal to 1 is our only solution to that, to that question.